All right, pre-show shenanigans. Uh, I say this every episode at this point. I think I've beaten you pre-show wise for topics like tw- like twenty eight to three right now. That's that's what it is. I hope I don't choke the lead, but um, uh, it's probably a bit bigger than that. Uh, I hope. I been, I mean, for for my own sake, I, I hope so. For my own sake, but uh, this seems to be a. I don't know why. I don't know why this is a returning subject. Airplanes. Um, airplanes. Airplanes again. We have a new airplane pre-show. This should just be the airplane show i mean at that point i I Uh, would say one thing that i've quickly realized about you bringing up airplanes so much is how this is one of the one things that as a society we can all agree on as americans like the (laughs) airplane food air that as well but just the everything involved with air airports oh airplanes you name it you're always you should expect yeah. the worst every single yes. time you go on a plane. Yes. Never 100%. expect things to go well. If I'm on a, if I'm on American and I'm taking shots at you right now, American, I'm expecting my flight to either get delayed or canceled, and I'm probably missing my connection. Like that's just ex- expected. You know, I, I'm always oh, on my phone. Or I'm the looking, connection's delayed. Yeah, or I'm looking. I'm looking for those secondary flights just in case because I know, I know that there's going to be some devious. I don't want to lead us. I don't want to lead you too off topic. But when you were just in LA, which flight canceled on you? Like at, when you were trying to leave, remember your flight got canceled. Which airline was that? Oh, I don't, it might have been American. It might, got, it might have, I don't know. Have been American. I don't know. It was either American or United. Went on the plane, so uh, it was either American. Well, you or didn't United. go on the plane, so <laughs> let me take that back. But, oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. Uh, I think it. I think it was United. I think it was United. That would add up. Also adds that makes up. a lot. Also of sense. adds up. Uh, but speaking about okay, uh, yeah. airlines and airplanes, um, most likely, I believe this was a, a United flight. Uh, it looks like a United plane. I want you to explain to me what you would do in this situation, how you would feel. Apparently, there were freak winds in the Atlantic the other week or like the other day, and a stream of wind, a wind stream, pushed an airplane to faster than the speed of sound, over 800 miles per hour, and they accelerated and got to their destination like two hours ahead of time. They, they went past, like, imagine you're in an airplane now, and mm-hmm. your airplane just suddenly just speeds up, just breaks the breaks the sound barrier and you're you're in there it's not built for that what is what is what is shrimp scampi guy doing in the bathroom when when that thing just goes zooming yeah so um would we describe this as a rogue pilot no this is the air like the, the literal wind around the plane oh is this pushing is the plane this is tailwind this is okay. like you don't have a choice the, this the is plane the is going this fast yes um Personally, what I would try to do in that scenario, uh, I I go go open. Well, shit, it's not there anymore. Uh, if I did, I would open up my Peacock app on my phone with Office downloaded on there, and I would immediately start watching um, the Carbo Load episode. It's a two parter. Uh, it's a nice fifty minutes. It'll it'll get you through that. Once you oh. see Michael Scott eating the fettuccine, you'll forget about everything. You're not gonna uh, be you're not gonna be crapping your pants when the plane just goes starts rattling a lot and it is going I will five hundred miles pants. per hour faster than it's supposed to be. I will if at that time I'm also watching the scene of Kevin dropping the giant uh chili. Chili, chili? Fuck, what do we even call that? Container? It's his chili vat. It's his chili yeah. vat. A vat of chili, yes. Uh if he drops his massive cylinder of chili, then that might expedite that process might you know encourage. i'm gonna be honest the best movie if you're watching a movie and that happens to you or even if you're not if you can muster up the well, courage i think i know to, one of the worst ones if you I can know, must, I I know one of the worst movies, if you can muster you up the courage it. to to actively not brace and and try and just turn on something to to relax you better be putting on top gun you better be putting on top gun when you're going 800 miles per hour that's the movie to turn on yeah, I was gonna say, do not watch snakes on a plane if you are in that. <laughs> well, that's scenario. a general. That's a general thing. You're like, don't do that. That's just any plane. plane. <laughs> yeah, just don't do unless that. You're, unless you're messed up in the head a little bit, like Scampy guy, then you might be, <laughs> you might be watching that shit on repeat. Uh, personally, I just want to get it out there. I've never seen snakes on a plane. I, I think just want Samuel L. Jackson's in that movie. I'm not yes. entirely sure. Oh, he, he is. is. Yes. Okay. Cat can is be Kareem, confirmed. Kareem is Kareem in that, or is that the other airplane? I movie? could not tell you. I know, yeah, 
the other movie is just called Airplanes. Airplane with an exclamation yes. point at yes. the end. Isn't it like two planes like bending is in the logo or something? It's like the planes bending I got in the logo. No idea. I've just oh. seen a screenshot of just seven two Kareem in the cockpit <laughs> and he just does not fit. Uh very funny oh. visual. Uh but yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, it was it is kind of interesting that in the 70s, 80s, 90s, because they had supersonic planes. Athletes were getting like paid so little that oh. like go to I Hollywood. think you're going a different direction. Oh, that's I'm just saying the amount of athletes in like the 60s 70s 80s who just started doing acting even though most of them weren't good at it but like that was the draw yeah don't forget right? Shaq had his own superhero movie i did forget that i don't think i ever knew that so uh <laughs> yeah i think we know why Shaq's acting career didn't last very long uh but yeah i think uh you got, you got any more pre-show stuff no that that was that was it yeah, I mean, you know, they're playing. It's a big discussion, big discussion point here. And you know what? Later on the episode, we're gonna have some more airplane discussion in the world of sports with oh. conference realignment uh, and some cross-country <laughs> traveling that will yeah. go down in the Big Ten. Uh, I'm just saying, quick preface: we are getting very close. Well, with a potential ACC team joining, this might screw things up. But I think we're a lot closer to having the big 10 get to like 20 teams and you know instead of an east and west divisions we'll just call the eastern one the big 10 and the west the pac 12 uh, i think it's, we're getting I mean, very close it's most that. likely what actually like it, it, it's a very real possibility of happening it'd be very funny <laughs> like no yeah, no that that would but be you keep hilarious. the conference called the big 10 it's just the eastern region is the big 10 the west is the pac 12 big 10 you get what i'm saying big 10's always involved you're either yeah, in the Big just, Ten, Big Ten, or the Big Ten, Pac-12. The Pac-10? Take those two teams off, go back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now we're going way too back historical. Uh-uh. We got to okay. at least keep okay. Pac-12 I, I had to, I had to at least, I had to ask. I had to ask. I, I mean, it is, I mean, objectively speaking, like, it is very funny that at one point, the Big 12 had 10 teams, and the Big Ten had 12 teams. Yeah. No, that, um... You would it's think funny. maybe like a, a name. You know, how many, how many teams are in the Big Ten know. now? Just how many teams are in the Big Ten? I believe right now it is 18. But it's still going to be called the Big Ten. So that's, that's oh, yeah. the best part. That's, never that's the best part of it. <laughs> that's never changing. Like the Big Ten. When you're trying to explain to a kid to who's 24 like getting, quickly. Just imagine trying to explain to a kid who's getting into college football for the first time. They're like, why is it called the Big Ten? And you're like, oh, because there's 10 teams. And he's like. There's 18 teams. It like, took no. me a while to quite <laughs> understand. It took me a minute to quite get it. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's going to be very conference confusing. realignment. There's, there's going to be lots to go over, but without further ado, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Waterboy Podcast. It is episode 190. Oh my God. And today, I'm Everett, so sorry. I'm so sorry if there's a headphone user here. I, I'm assuming that, that that was not just me, but if it, if it was, then I'm going crazy. I just heard one of those like mic sharp sharp noise where it like spikes in, in like the a noise. static type thing uh, no like when you're like unplugging the mic and it makes that really loud sharp noise yeah 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 that went into my ear so yeah like half the the headphone off yeah. half in half yeah. out yeah yeah that's yeah. the noise uh, so i'm apologizing in case that was not just me and it was our listeners so yeah uh, i uh yeah i mean shit we <sighs> Sorry, on an intern, you might have a little extra energy tonight. Uh, but today is the first day of MLB spring training. Okay. Why well, I asked the question last week, what era of sports are we in now that the Super Bowl is done? Now that we don't have football for another seven months, what do we even do with our day now? Uh, it's now baseball time. All right. America's America's favorite path, well, not not favorite pastime anymore, but former favorite pastime is now back to a degree. Uh, we have some uh, a lot of college football playoff official announcements and potential transitions that could be happening soon to go over and we have a vintage instagram unfollow drama update that we need to dive into uh not this. with stefan diggs for once surprisingly oh yeah not very with surprisingly oh, my. i i totally forgot there is a second one involving a miami dolphin player that i just also remembered happened today so there i mean what? the instagram unfollows that's how we track how players want to move on from a team or stay with a team so we can essentially confirm right now, Justin Fields and Tyree Kill, gone. So sorry, Dolphins fans. I know you don't want to hear it, but hey, Tyreek said it himself. But I think it's uh, 
for the first day of MLB spring training, we got to start off a little MLB ever. Got to start off. Uh, there's no bigger topic in baseball right now, of course. I mean, technically, the biggest topic right now should be free agency. It should be how there's a lot of big this names. This is telling you how unsigned. bad they, they screwed but this up. Even despite that, no. The only thing that most casual fans are talking about are the awful. Now, I don't They're exactly awful. know who to give the credit to, Nike fanatics. or Fanatics. Nike, I, I don't because know exactly. Nike, Nike willingly gave it to Fanatics. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so we're going we're gonna to put that blame uh, on Nike there, but they have see-through pants. You can literally see the jersey tucked into the pants, through the pants. Um, let's just yeah, say no, that— If there is a Gatorade bath on field at any point in time, they're, they're going to need to put up viewer discretion is advised yeah, I, on I the can, screen. Yeah, I, I, let's just say if Jose Altuve— had a concern uh, when he was wearing a buzzer with his teammates uh, ripping off his jersey because, you know, it would upset his wife. Well, Jose, your wife's going to be upset every single time you step on the field. So uh, <laughs> we're going to need to make a change here, MLB, or fanatics. We're going to need to make a change here. Uh, also, but you I know mean, they're not going to. That's the thing. Like, they will not. No. I, I legitimately think that my jersey that I have in my closet right now that's from – that I bought from Nike is – I, I would I would take that off of my back and hand it to Mookie during the game if he needed it, just, just because saying, of how have, crappy the jerseys are. I have seen from Michigan uh, accounts on Twitter, they ordered a bunch of apparel from Fanatics after Michigan won the national championship, and almost all of the shirts are just misprinted, like just off-centered and shit. It's like Well, now, you remember, no lack I'm not going to name names, but there is an individual that you're friends with I met for the first time during Mardi Gras who has a jersey from Fanatics with the three printed the wrong direction for Tank Dell. Yeah, I okay. I to, uh, At least it was centered. It okay, was at centered. least it was centered. <laughs> it was at centered. least it was centered. It was okay, that. we can give them some credit here, okay? We can't absolutely shit on them and i would say that's the one of one but realistically they probably produce probably like some mass production of thousands <laughs> of them and then they realize like oh, oh shit fuck. tank tank dell uh, did someone uh, is he number eight did someone just uh forget to Freak. draw the rest of the eight? Oh, that's a backwards three never mind uh we really shit. fucked up uh yeah no fanatics they've had a lot of a lot of apparel mistakes recently printing mistakes uh yeah, we know they're not going to fix it. We we know they're not going to fix shit. Uh, but it is just funny to think. And also the other thing, um, with the jerseys on the back, the name plates are getting a little absurd now. Now Pete Crow Armstrong, I believe he has not probably not the longest, but one of the longest last names in the MLB. And let's just say Pete's not too far away from getting a full circle. Uh, of uh, that's his what last we need. Name that's around, that's around what America numbers. needs, though. America oh, needs yeah. that. I like, need a I full just... circle with the shittiest jersey physically available in all of sports because that's just the basic MLB jersey right now. I, I, yeah, it's like any person or any MLB player with a hyphenated last name, you're an easy candidate to get the circle. Like I was immediately thinking D. Strange Gordon. Like, let's just do the yeah. full circle. Let's yeah, just do just, it. Why just not? get it. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking like his name won't do the whole thing, but like last year, Syndergaard would have had a rainbow over his number. Because his name would have wrapped around. Like I, uh, the jerseys just look stupid. They look dumb. They they had that picture of Otani. He it's like so bad. He just and looks the fact that they stupid. why why do you move like why do you move where the cutoff is on on the actual jersey like why do you do that that makes no sense to me. Like uh, it's if I could think of like major jersey rebrands like NFL when they went from Reebok. Uh, to Nike in like 2012, 13, 14 ish. Like MLB, they haven't like necessarily had like major substantial literal jersey changes. Like I know Nike has just came in, but like no, I mean the the problem with we the got M like a weird a weird gross cream white color this year. Uh, it, it's not like a vintage like the like white the NFL jersey. When the NFL switched jerseys, like the NFL didn't have problems when they switched jerseys. The only problem that came about it was the fan jerseys because Fanatics got the license to do the fan jerseys. And that's why there's a problem 
when people are like, why do my jersey, why does my jersey not look like what they have on the field? Like, I want that. I like, also I do miss that? the hockey jersey sleeves. We we do need to bring those back. My Sean Merriman is uh, beautiful. So I mean, yeah, yeah yes. They look no. so like, bad. They look so bad. You need the old, like, <laughs> mesh. Oh, bad. That's what you, you need, the old, like, mesh that you had. Like, the Packers are the only team that still have it. Yeah. And that's because yeah. I swear they they probably, like, Nike, I swear I think to God. Aaron, if I think this, Aaron was like, no. We're leaving Need this. <laughs> no, I think I think not the even are, there anymore. The Aaron like, still gets like, final say. Nike, if you if you fuck this up, if fanatics, if you fuck this up, you're not getting our license anymore. It's not happening. Yeah, I mean, if yeah, I think that the NFL has had some major changes recently. I would say if there's anything that Nike has done well, it's um the in jersey towel or hand warmers. The in jersey hand warmers are sick. Great addition. Great yes, addition. Yes. Uh, yes. But, but <laughs> other than that, though, I'm not sure how many more shout outs I can give this, to Nike. The, the MLB is, I, is we need quite, more helmets. I know that's an NFL rule, but we need more help. The MLB quite literally like this. It's the worst. It's the worst display of. Hold on. Who's who does the NHL jerseys? That's what I want to do. Um, no clue. I'm not the guy to ask for that. I'm look. I'm just looking it up. I'm looking it up. Um, hold on. Um, I just uh, I just came across one of the funniest tweets I've ever read in my life. Okay, I take um, it back. I take it back. Well, Adidas was the NHL jersey partner until 2017, and then guess who took it over? Fanatics. Yep. And guess what immediately okay. happened? All right, all right, Fanatics has a monopoly, uh, is, is what we've learned. Yeah, you want to uh, talk the about the CDL. The only real ones are going to get this. You want to talk about the CDL having a monopoly. Fanatics has a real monopoly, so. Yeah, I mean, shit, I, I think I know why Michael Rubin sold off the Sixers. Fanatics is booming right now. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, a lot of things add up here. Uh, I will say the other thing that I want to bring about. Oh, MLB, my God. Uh, I'm sorry. I just, re- I just realized it, the, the pants are see-through. The, the, it's like the worst thing that you could physically do not because like the you know, Gatorade bass or whatever the fact that a, like solid half of the season if not more is in the scorching sun where people sweat a lot this is gonna be horrible it's gonna i mean you can't take children to the game anymore almost every catcher after two innings in the middle of july home oh that's gonna God. be some serious swamp ass if you know what i mean i mean my <laughs> some God. sweats it is gonna be brutal out there like one thing i also know a big trend recently has been the tight pants on the pitchers walker we're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna have to go baggy this year brother do you uh, think that they could like sneak don't, out don't want to don't pants, like they, they we don't want a pg-13 rating on mlb games uh can you can you can you like do you think that they could like the equipment rooms like yeah so we have 60 pairs of pants from last year we'll give you guys one you get one each do not fuck it up. Yeah, no, of course. Uh, fanatics are like, yeah, no, no, no. Like, we can't, we don't have that many backups from the year before. I know they have a warehouse of just oh, so many pants. I know 100%. They do. They're going to start going to Dick's and buying, like, the old, like, the shitty, like, ones just because they're not see-through. Yeah, I mean, shit. At least give them Mizunos or something, you know? G- give them something nice. But, no, I mean, realistically, we, we know that we know they don't care about them. They're, they're going to be wearing shit. Uh, at least we're easing off on the city connect jerseys i mean those are atrocious but at least we're laxing on those uh but other thing i want to bring up everything else got worse i know you haven't seen this one but ellie de la cruz phenom young stud for the cincinnati reds had a little bp session the other day against another oh i have seen this young red star i have seen this now ellie had a nice ass session hitting a couple balls even out of the stadium and uh, one ball specifically left the stadium and hit a specific thing. Pitcher's car. And where did that ball land? Yep, you guessed it. Perfectly hit the window and shattered Hunter Green's car, who was pitching against Ellie De La Cruz in that BP session. So um, I feel like that's just a perfect uh, representation uh, of how baseball works. Uh, it's always going to come back to bite you in the ass. Uh, I feel like that's just how this shit works. Like baseball without these little coincidence things. Uh, how the hell can we get through an 162 game season? Uh, if we can't 
like the Reds can literally live off of this for the next three months. Like that, this can carry them. But also, though, the Reds aren't bad either anymore. Like that's the thing. Like the oh, Reds yeah. aren't. I know. Yeah. So I mean, they don't. I, they don't necessarily I saw need a couple it. Dodger Reds games last year. I got to see Ellie in person. The, the boy, Oakland A's really need deep. that, but yeah, I, well, Oakland A's need a lot more uh, than just some <laughs> some vibes, culture, and some some youth development. Uh, they need a lot more than that. I know. Uh, I know you've seen the meme that was like going around. It's like, oh, 14 year old me like trying to fix the Jets cap problem by upping hot dog prices to 100. Can you imagine what the problem is with the Oakland A's right now? Because they've had nobody at the stadium to fix the problems. Actually, no, there's not even a problem because they don't pay anybody. I mean, it definitely. I, I mean, now that you bring it up, there was definitely a large portion of the season where the stadium costs outweighed the gate revenue from game day. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I mean, wow, that is just really sad to think about if you just take no, a step that's, back that's, real quick. Well, yeah, well yeah. I mean, shit, while we're on the topic. It's of great for the fans, game, though. They, they deserve to, to do that. Other day, my roommate who is sitting here, he might, he might make a little guest appearance actually right now if, if he's interested. But we were just talking about revenue ticket prices. And I immediately thought that it should, in theory, make sense for the Yankees or Dodgers to end the year with the highest ticket sales because they have 81 home games in a 60,000 uh, seat stadium. So just in theory, just logistic wise. You're just saying, that. you're saying ticket revenue or total revenue? Just ticket, ticket. Yes, yes. Game that, day that revenue. That makes sense, yes. And I was like, in theory, that should make sense. Guess which American sports franchise earned the highest gates revenue in the 2023 fiscal year it's an nfl team maybe i shouldn't have given that away but it is an nfl team, cardinals even though they only have eight to nine home games cardinals oh hell no i i, I bet they're probably top 32 though i think there might all be <laughs> nfl teams uh number one's the niners which oh oh i thought you meant and i thought you meant mlb team that was oh, no, an no, nfl no. team no, I thought no, you were no, talking no, about the MLB. No, I, I was, you, you, all you American astray, sports. Man. Yeah, okay. I, I messed that one up a little bit. That one, that was on me. Uh, I'd say, yeah, shit. Cardinals is actually would have been the best guess. Answer? Over, yeah, maybe Giants. Yeah, probably Giants. MetLife. MetLife's big, big. It, I mean, it is. But Met St. Louis big. doesn't have much sports, so. Well, well we're talking Arizona Cardinals, not St. Louis. I, I thought you were talking about MLB teams still. No, no, no. no. Ah, shit. Okay. But <laughs> anyway, I was just saying that even oh. despite playing one ninth of the home games of an MLB team with a comparable oh, 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 capacity, oh. I, I get what you're saying. I, th I thought you were you were asking me what team in the MLB no, no, no. has the highest revenue. It's surprising because it's not the Dodgers or Yankees. It's an, it's a team that's oh, has the same no, name no. as an NFL it is, team. It is Yankees and Dodgers. It okay, is you you massively massively confused me there um yeah, no, no, it did, didn't quite word that word that as well as i hope to but i was just i was just shocked to hear yeah, that it could have been know? a little you bit better 81 I'll, I'll, I'll home games that's a lot that's a lot of days a lot of a lot a lot of um working hours there but okay uh moving on to college football a lot lot to discuss today uh we're gonna start off with um should we start with conference realignment or do i start off with uh the transfer portal update I mean, I'm assuming transfer portal update is not going to take long, so do that. Yeah, that, that will be quick. Okay, transfer portal update. Um, former Michigan four-star safety, top 100 player in his class, Keon Sab, has committed to the Alabama Crimson Tide, who just took down Michigan. Uh, there's a big-time post going around Twitter um, of a winter workout uh, conditioning drill on Alabama, and let's just say um, Roll Tide Willie is not happy. Let's just say Roll Tide Willie has upped his personal NIL donation uh, to the Alabama NIL fund. Uh, let's just say um, the great state of Alabama, they, are, they, need, they need to work a little bit harder right now. Uh, but Keon Sab has left Michigan, gone to Alabama, but it doesn't end there, folks. It looks like, well, I think I could say it now. It looks like former star Michigan cornerback Will Johnson might be going to. Uh, now, I remember going down to Will Johnson's high school recruitment, him and Damani Jackson, very, uh, very tight, very close. Pretty sure they're on the same seven-on-seven -seven team. And for a while, people were thinking that 
Will Johnson and Damani might end up at Michigan together. Damani Jackson, his recruitment kind of came down to USC, Michigan, and Bama. He ended up going to USC as a Trojan. I can attest myself. Probably probably wasn't the greatest performance out of Damani, but he he gets an excuse. He gets an excuse. He had a Grinch uh, coaching him. Uh, but I brought up a couple of weeks ago, Will Johnson, Damani Jackson are likely a package deal. Uh, remember that, folks? Remember that one, Scott Lenahan? Yeah, I know you do. Uh, so <laughs> he yeah, always does. Uh, looks like Will Johnson, Damani are going to actually be that package deal uh, going to Alabama. Who would have thought? Will Johnson and Keon Sab taking, taking down the Alabama Crimson Tide, and then they're leaving the year after Nick Saban leaves. Who would have thought? I thought the culture at Michigan was different, Everett. That I was told those who stay will be champions. That's what I was told. Guess not. But that's, uh, you know, the interesting little update that, that we had in the transfer portal. Uh, but the cultural playoff committee, even bigger news, uh, more general news for everybody. They have approved their official playoff format going to 12 teams next year. So the five highest ranked conference champions, okay, that's, that's how it's laid out. They will get auto bids. Of those five highest ranked conference champions, the top four will get first round buys. And that is those are the strategically only set up so that the group of five team cannot essentially. But, but, but what... get, get ready. There are also seven at large spots to fill out the rest. But this is something that really interested me. Really interested me here. Now, the Pac 12 in theory doesn't exist. They technically do. Oregon State and Washington State are technically in the Pac-2 next year. Uh, but this is a little loophole I was thinking about. Oregon State, or Wazoo, might technically be able to backdoor their way in as a conference champ over the G5 team. I would, I would, I, I would be, I'd be, I'd be pissed. I, like it's, it would be stupid but also if they do that good. like the strength of competition though would have to be so high and also like it's to to me if 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 they end up being if the Pac-12 isn't officially dead dead and it's just those two teams to me well that is true they will have just them two next season at least right to me that operates as the independent conference essentially like that's like Notre Dame is bitching about not yeah, getting a they first should be round Notre buy Dame. stuff it's going to be it's the to same get, deal. Get it's too. the same. It's but, the same yeah. deal. And, and I think that it'd be, I don't think that it would have been agreed upon in the way if the G5 was essentially not given that kind of bid. Like if everybody sucks, okay, that makes sense. But I don't think that's going to be the case. That's why they have it be the next best seven teams. Because if, if a group of five team doesn't make it right they're and like they're they're going to be ranked. They might be ranked in the back end, so they might not get in. But those teams that would be conference championship champions would probably be ranked higher at that point, and therefore would still get in as one of those seven teams. No, yeah, like I'm thinking, like let's say Tulane and Oregon State were both. Well, let's say this. Wait, shit. I don't know exactly, but I think technically the Pac-2. We already know. Who's gonna play in the conference championship game in the pack? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> wait, wait, technically, I don't, I don't, don't know. we know? I, 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 it has not been confirmed yet, but the leakers are saying it is. Well, we'll have to see. You know, we Oregon need. We State. still need to see some things play out on the field before we can conclude it. I already. don't know who the one uh, seed will be, but but uh, yeah, I who, can confirm. Who gets to wear the colors, uh, the color jerseys uh, at the neutral site? They uh, both do. Is wearing it's a participation trophy. They both get to. Which, I mean, this is a whole side note. I can't believe that essentially, like, UCLA, USC are the only ones who do it. But, like, for rivalry week, I'm, I'd, be, I'd be very down for both teams to wear their home colors. That, that's just me. That's just me. That's just me. I, I could be it looks down. beautiful be with USC that. and UCLA. It might not work with other colors. But, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. But that was very interesting to me. A, a potential loophole back door for the Pac-2 to get in. Uh, we don't like that. Thing. We don't like that. Uh, another thing I just wanted to really stress is that there will be no reseeding in this uh, bracket format. And there is, to a degree, an avenue where being the five seed could be the most advantageous position 
because you will be taking on the weakest. You're conference saying that champ. last that last conference champion of the five? No, 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 no. The top, uh, the top at large. So the five highest ranked conference champions get auto bids, but only f- the top four of those five get buys. So the when- fifth conference champion you're considered an at-large, you're ranked wherever. Oh, okay. I thought that so, you would be, like, required to still be five and you're just mm-mm. playing in a game. Uh, okay. So if you want to be honest, um, I, I think if I have my math correct here, last year, uh, 12 seed Liberty would have had to walk into the shoe um, first round yes. of the playoffs. Yep. Nope, I remember because Tulane was put in that position for a while. Liberty would have lost probably 64 <laughs> to, I don't know, three. And for, Bro, every, for sure any Liberty could have put up for, 64 for any, on that. For, for I any don't think Liberty, Honda could have done that. For, uh, for, for any Liberty, well, it's your defense. Uh, for any Liberty, and that's saying a lot. For any Liberty fan that's like, well, Let's Tulane would have lost. I'll take that. Tulane, Tulane would have If we played them, we play up. We, last year we played up and down a competition. We, we would have, we probably would have made it again. We lost. Not saying we would have, but uh, would have done better than Liberty. All right, and if you guys like, look State? at the full game, yeah, better than Liberty. I'll give you that. I'm not saying I'm not saying we would have won. I'm not also saying we would have lost, but we would have done better than Liberty. And you Liberty, know, fans, I don't, I don't. We're not spending. I don't. I'm not here to say anything mean. But I, I just remember the last time I looked up Ohio State versus Tulane, boy. Yeah, that was... Boy, did that pull my mind in a blender when I found out who the Ohio State DC was. <laughs> oh. He stole Christmas, by the way, folks. Uh, but okay, <laughs> Notre Dame. Uh, people online, more so Notre Dame fans, were complaining how a 12-0 undefeated Notre Dame team would not get a first-round buy. All right, let's oh start goodness. off with let's start off with the, the football reason, not the Notre Dame bitch reason. Let's start with the football reason, okay? Notre Dame, okay, they don't need to play that conference championship game week. They get an extra week off. Uh, And to be honest, if Notre Dame was in the Big Ten, they would never win the conference championship game, people. You think Michigan, or sorry, you think Notre Dame could beat Michigan in the past three years, Ohio State, or even Penn State? Hell no. USC, yes, but USC would, does Notre be Dame is Notre Dame allowed to poach Connor Stallions? I think that would go against their school motto. Okay, I think I think that I would go ask. against everything I, I, I they had. Stand for. I had to ask. I had to ask. I think it'd go against everything they stand. For. Uh, but if I were Marcus Freeman, I would have already contacted Mr. Stallions. Uh, but Notre Dame, they don't need to risk playing in that conference championship game that could knock them out. I mean, under the four, under the four team system, if Notre Dame went undefeated 12 and 0, they were auto in it, like that. You guys just had a benefit for the past decade. Yeah, oh, and they still how many complain. playoff games did they win? Big whopping donut zero. So, I mean, you guys just had the, literally the easiest path to the playoffs for the past decade and you have nothing to show for. Uh, But Notre Dame, you guys can't complain about this not getting a conference championship by because you're the reason you're not in a conference. Notre Dame, it's not the Big Ten who's blacklisting Notre Dame. I'm pretty sure they offered Notre Dame. They did. And then Notre Dame said no. And then they started realizing all these moves happening. And then Notre Dame realized that they could actually make more money from their TV deal if they joined the Big Ten than if they stayed independent. So that's why they want to join the Big Ten. And are they in the Big Ten, Grant? Uh, the Big Ten responded with a very prompt um, F you. <laughs> now, I, I, I do know when it comes to those Big Ten conference discussions, Ohio State, uh, Gene Smith, former AD, like he is the biggest voice in the room. Like yes. at the end of the day, his vote counts for three. Uh, and I know he was a big blocker of Notre Dame, but I don't expect new AD Ross Bjork coming over for a and to change that mindset at all. No, I no, want to don't. keep this Notre Dame blacklist going. I hate Notre Dame. They are so unbelievably arrogant as a fan base. They are like, hey, you never see me do this. Like, at least Michigan has won a national championship in the past 30 years, okay? Notre that Dame. That is very, very true. <laughs> what the hell have you guys... Hey, hey, that, that movie, Rudy... 
You guys really? got the box yes. office. You guys got that. Yeah, shit. yeah. Right. And and you got Manti you guys are an entertainment, an entertainment company. Okay, that's what Notre Dame is. <laughs> Sorry, that was mean. Uh, but yeah, you guys can't bitch. You like you, you're the reason you don't get to benefit benefit from a first round buy, which you never get because you never win the conference championship game anyway. But uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, of course, right after the 12 team format gets announced, of course, we already got to talk about expansion again. Earlier today, the committee met about a potential 14 team playoff, which nothing got confirmed today. But according to Pete Thamel, the fact that they even addressed it today is very interesting. Well, it's, it's, it is, it is very that interesting. They even addressed it already. Now, get into your theory regarding this. Yet. Now, get into your theory regarding where this leads. So uh, we all know football is all about money, okay? Uh, at the end of the day, why did USC and UCLA go to the Big Ten? Uh, Fox Sports, that, that's why they went to the Big Ten. Uh, so I am willing to go on record now saying that we will have a 68-team college football March Madness playoff bracket structure by the year 2035, okay? I have done the math. I have thought it all out. The TV contract deal this one that's about to become place will expire 2034. When that expires, we're going to have a lot of things moving parts in place. Who knows? Maybe cable doesn't even exist anymore. We got no idea. But uh, from a short-term perspective, sports business industry, a little uncertain outlook on the revenue stream. So how do you get that revenue back, Everett? More games. More games. And that's what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I and, like and if that um, which was uh, which, which college said their uh, which college basketball team said their players are student athletes? Dartmouth. Dartmouth. Okay, Ivy League. Never mind. Shit, I thought it was. I thought. I thought <laughs> well, it was look, like also, DePaul or here's something. Here's the one thing. All right, all right. Real, real quick, real quick. Right <laughs> now, say, like if if we could have the athletes be employees, then like hold on. Right now, say no right now, to an right now, schedule. right now. The current expanded playoff schedule, and this is like for me, like it, it, like this sucks for players, coaches, and staff members. This new schedule sucks, and the first round right now is that first round will be the December twentieth, twenty first. All right, you are then you are eliminated or you're practicing through Christmas, and the games are going to be December thirty first and the first. So you're missing Christmas and you're missing New Year's. All right. Then you now have the semifinals January 9th and 10th, and the college football playoff is going to be on. Oh, the did 20th. they already lay out what the dates are yes. going to be? Yes. Oh, okay. Let me and see. so, so one, if you end up being the team that wins this, great for you. But this is essentially two and a half weeks of straight extra games, and you are your entire break period that your body would be normally recovering, and you'd be able to actually spend time with your family and stuff gone it's completely gone yeah, i gotta see the national championship is this like the third week of january now <laughs> january 20th it is what the like, fuck by an entertainment we're like an nfc conference championship week all right by, by an entertainment perspective from a fan that's great it's more football that's what people want but by a player standpoint by a coach's standpoint by a staff member standpoint this is absolutely brutal. This is this is terrible. And it's because uh, the yeah, amount I of, mean I, I yeah. guarantee you though, the amount of injuries are gonna go up. The the like there's just so many things that are gonna go the wrong way inside of like these teams and these schools. And I mean they like, gotta change the recruiting periods too. <laughs> that the transfer portal period is gonna have to change, especially after this year with the way coaches left. Like it's that just it's not gonna work well that way. And on top of all of that, like I, I'm for it by the basis is it gives these smaller teams, these smaller schools in the G5 an opportunity to be able to go far. But like, how does the rest of bowl season work? Like, how is the re like, how is this all going to like work out then? Like if you get eliminated, but I'm saying, like, I hate if to you say it, but I think we are close to the end of bowl. 
Don't, um, don't tell me the Pop Tarts Bowl is going down soon. That big. Oh hell no! That's going to be the national championship. I also ever. don't uh, think we bowl have to season, sacrifice unless, the life size Pop Tart every all, year. Unless all the teams are going to be playing in, like you said, a, a March Madness kind of tournament, which I don't think is feasible. I'm joking with football. about that. I know. Not, I don't think it's, it's feasible. <laughs> I I don't think that bowl season will ever end. It's just a question to me is going to be no doubt in my mind though. Sixteen in three years at least. Yeah, but here's my question: If you're that first round team, right? December 20th, 21st, that's technically like the start of bowl season. If you lose that, like, does that game count as your bowl game? Or if you lose that, then you get to go to an additional bowl game. No, that's your bowl game. No, that's your bowl game. Like, that's my question. Because those games are supposed to be, that first round is supposed to be at the the higher seed school, like school. It's not a bowl site. Like, it's a home game for that team, which is why. Oh, I know, but I love that. But But no, but that's why I'm asking if it counts as your bowl game or not. Because it's not at a neutral site and all those. So kind of I mean, it won't have the name of it, but I think like they'll just they'll call it shit. Uh, round, uh, court, quarter, not the quarterfinal. The, yeah, first, first round. round. Yeah, that'll that'll be listed in the history books. First round. I don't know. Uh, that's just interest interesting to me. Um, yeah, I mean, to be honest, it. It makes sense. College football, we, it has been going this direction. It is just no, yeah. I, it I has don't know how I'm going to explain to my kids uh, about the Big Twelve. I I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to. I'm going to need a full on PowerPoint. Now, the the other thing that we need to talk about, we talked about, uh, we 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 kind of got into a little bit. Um, the Big Ten, um, mm-hmm. the Big Ten is now coast to coast in multiple directions. It's been rumored that FSU will be joining uh, the Big Ten, uh, leaving the ACC. Uh, Grant, as an individual who uh, goes yeah, okay. to a school in the Big Ten and is a fan of a school in the Big Ten. So, um, yeah. uh, as, as, shit, as a student of the newest Big Ten team to be introduced. Well, not, not the newest anymore. Oh, it's about yeah, to be no, 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 no. Or, or the first team there to be go. announced. In that letter, it said USC and UCLA, not UCLA and USC. So we were first. Uh, but I had a sports sports business class, and there was a girl on the track team in the class, and she was just bringing up like, yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not looking forward to a track meet in uh, at Rutgers in Piscataway, New Jersey. And I was like, huh, never thought about you guys. Uh, but then I thought a little bit, you know, I, I'll be honest. I'm not, I can't say I'm tuning in to, to women's track. That's just me. I'll put a finger up. That's on me. But I do watch a lot of college basketball. And the, the college basketball schedule for many teams, Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday. You got three games a week, and this is just every league scheduling. You go on your away trips. You go on your home trip, stay at home. But when you go on the away trips, okay, you are on the road and you are, you are just on the road. And especially this year, college basketball, a big trend. I'm not, not sure if you noticed, but home teams have been winning at an unprecedented rate this year. It is so hard to win on the road this year in college basketball. That like, Especially if you're UConn. Especially if you're UConn. Yeah, I mean, we, we don't need to bring up Danny today. Uh, Danny Hurley, <laughs> I, I love him, by the way. But I mean... It's so hard to win on the road. And when I heard of a potential Florida State team joining the Big Ten, my first thought, although I know I know no one else thought this, my first thought was, what if you were the role player on the Washington men's basketball team? Tuesday, or actually Saturday, game in Seattle. Home game, you get to wake up in your bed. You get to wear your same warm-up sweats and everything, and you get to warm up that fucking bench seat. You get to warm that shit up. Tuesday, oh, fuck. We're, go- we're going acro- literally across the country to Tallahassee? Tally. Is, that, is that where Florida well, State is? Yes. Wait. Yeah. Yes. Across yes. the... Yes? Yes. Right? Yes. I think. But yes. you're going literally diagonally across the country for a Tuesday game. You just play that means Saturday. you most likely, it's like a six hour flight plus like two hours time, three hour time change. So you're leaving Monday night and flying over there to make it. I feel, like they'd, I feel like they'd have to leave like maybe early, Sunday. like during the day. <laughs> yeah, no, like I, I don't know how it works but for basketball, but finish your game Tuesday and guess what? 
Thursday night, you have a game in Illinois. Now you're going back to Chicago. Like, I just can you just imagine? Like, even then, that game going back, you have a game Tuesday, you immediately leave, right? The second the game's over on the immediately fucking, on the you plane. probably are We're gone. still going to get into the next site later than if you had just stayed and, and, and not have switched conferences. Like, I'm just going forward, when it comes to college basketball, I will be paying attention to when you have your Florida State road game, okay? <laughs> when you have your Florida State road game, wraps. Like that also, Florida State might be the greatest home team in the history of college basketball moving forward. That also I don't know how they'll ever lose. for Florida State, though. Like, that's also just... No, awful. it goes both ways. Yeah. Like, dominant at home, good luck ever winning on the road. Good fucking luck. <laughs> like... And for, for FSU, too, like, that is, that is hard. That it's is, a pain in the like for, sorry now, for football for football for football that is hard the the one thing though that uh mark titus was bringing this up at least for football you know it's a regimented like regiment schedule for your traveling like you're traveling the same day it like for basketball because it's so sudden like oh god uh tallahassee to illinois to fucking indiana to nebraska to back to see imagine uh-huh. if you are florida uh-huh. like we talked we joked about this with the like usc going to like iowa if you're florida if you're fsu I mean, still get ready and folks, you you have to go to ready. you have to go to minnesota in november in december yeah, that's what i'm saying like do you, people don't quite understand oh. how hard it's going to be for usc to go to iowa in november like if like you have if you have the back to back games like, if you have back to back if you're like FSU and you have back to back away weeks Washington and then any of the cold states, a quarter of your team's coming down with pneumonia because it's gonna rain in Washington and then you're going to fucking back to Tally it's gonna be warm and then you're going back up to somewhere where it's cold and snow. I mean yeah, to pneumonia. a degree like if you were Florida State and you had a like a two game road trip in the Midwest in November, would you arguably just stay out there for practice in between the games? Just it depends on what that, your academic situation if they're allowed, is. Yeah. Well, yeah. at Florida state, they definitely are allowed yeah, to. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to move us along here. <clears throat> Let's get into the NFL real quick. Um, yeah. First, I thing, wouldn't bring just, up chip Kelly as new OC, but yeah. I, I don't need to remind everyone how bad Bob, Bob the Builder is. First, so first, if you first think thing, Kelly's a downgrade, go read thing, your tweets when Bob uh, the Builder little, got little hired. Story. I'm assuming that you saw this, but for our listeners and our watchers, um, everybody's aware that Dan Campbell's a little bit of a he's a hard like he's he's a hard nosed guy, right? He's a football um, guy. He's a football, he's a football guy. guy. Dan Campbell was talking in a meeting, meaning team meeting, just addressing the whole team, just talking, just you know, getting getting pretty intense. And his tooth just flies out. Oh, is this the Jared Goff story? Goes on the ground, picks up the tooth, pops it back in, keeps going. How did the tooth stay in? I've been asking myself that question. I think he just jammed it back in there. You, yeah, you have chip. You have chip teeth too. We both have chip teeth. I. Now, I was the original chip tooth. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. I've never felt my like fillings. I have. Yeah, I've got mine recently. So I've never felt that. Well, I remember because I told you that yeah, mine, no, I, mine I randomly came out. Yeah. I am just, I'm saying that this was his full tooth. Like this was not like a court. Like this is, it, it's, it like fell out of the root. out of the root? Yeah, on the ground. Just picked it up, slammed Danny, it back in there. Danny, Danny, what are we doing, man? Football guy. Yeah, football okay. guy all right yeah yeah okay um, I, you know what i can respect it i i can honestly respect now it. Uh, it i'll be honest if, for a second if i was if i was a lions fan and i heard that i would be pretty pretty hyped up right now i would be i'd be excited about that oh now, definitely now, definitely secured an extra vote of confidence now if i now if i see a lions player <clears throat> kirby joseph <clears throat> sorry uh next year try and rip somebody's tooth out i'm gonna be pretty pissed all right i'm gonna be pretty pissed um, yeah, I, I, I can think of those one specific football play where a tooth was popped out. I want to shout out uh, Mac Wilson right now, popping out Speedy Noyle's tooth. But yeah. Now, I have, uh, I have a, 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 a trade. Wait, uh, actually, shit. Wait, I'm sorry. While we're on the topic of teeth, you're a, you're a major puckhead. Is it now kind of like the standard for maybe not like a Connor Bedard, but like if you're a defenseman in the NHL, how many teeth? should be out like three you gotta have both front two 
gone. Of course. They need to be if gone. Anything, yeah, of course. I'm like, are you expected to keep your bottom row? I feel like the bottom is a I little feel bit better protected. Almost impossible to lose your bottom teeth, but uh, maybe I've seen I've seen it. But uh okay. Uh little 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 hypothetical trade action here involving the Vikings. Uh and I'm gonna preface this by saying this was not proposed by a Vikings fan, and preface this by saying this is fucking stupid. Uh this is from Stroud Muse, who is like one of the stats muse guys. It's yeah. Stroud Muse, right? Obviously. So Texans trade. Wait, wait. Okay. So real quick. Are we sure they're affiliated with Stat Muse? Or are they I just... honestly have no fucking idea. Okay. Either way, All this right. was a proposed trade by somebody. All right. All right. So All right. somebody, I don't know if they have a brain, but they proposed it. Uh, Texans get Justin Jefferson. Vikings get the 23rd pick, Tank Dell, and the 2025 second pick. You know what I would respond with? Go fuck yourself. Like that's I, I, I pick up the phone right back down. Yeah, I, I okay. I, I I'm thinking like you know, you know in draft day, I you, know you, I know you've seen draft day now. We're about to come back on your your annual uh my annual watch of draft um, day. Um not not confirmed, not confirmed, not confirmed, but semi breaking news. Uh Blake Snell is expected to sign with the New York Yankees. Yankees suck, it's fine. Um not confirmed, not confirmed. But um, there's a scene in draft day where, you know, he calls the Seattle Seahawks GM a pancake eating fucker. Yeah, no, that's what I'd be calling uh, Nick Cesario from, from the Texans. Uh, not only did, does this just not make sense in any, in any capacity. Wait, breaking news. Adrian Peterson has just announced that he did not personally authorize the sale of his memorabilia. Holy sh- shit. That's well, that, I mean, we had a 20 minute segment that we got to cut now. Uh, um, but look, like, sorry, if, if, sorry. if the Vikings were right in there. any capacity to trade Justin Jefferson, I want three first, like, you the starting price is at least two first round picks, a 23rd overall pick, not getting that shit done. Tank Dell, not getting that shit done. I'm sorry, Tank Dell, great wide receiver, but if you put him in the same atmosphere as Justin Jefferson, just you, for reference. Like, if they offered you Tank Dell, Nico Collins, and a first, you would say no still, correct? Yes, I would say no. All right. Also, that cap strike, like, that, that just doesn't make, like, this a stupid idea per cap spit. Like, that's just stupid. Um, because Vikings won't be able to pay for all of that. Like, that's the same thing. You, you, you have to extend Justin Jefferson, and people get these, this, this stupid idea where it's like, okay, Justin Jefferson doesn't want to be on the Vikings. He, like, they can't pay him. Vikings can pay him. He wants to be there. The only thing is that one, he wants to know what the situation with the quarterback is, like anybody would want to do in that position. And two, the Vikings kind of didn't want to guarantee him money outside of that first year just because the wide receiver position is so just a dynamic position. Like it's not guaranteed you're going to be able to be consistent. I don't think that that's that big of a hurdle. I think the Vikings will be like, all right, I mean, fuck, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. If um, I was if I was Justin Jefferson's agent, I just hold up a chart showing uh, wide receivers in their first three years total yards. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just it's showing just the chart. People, people like who are not Vikings fans think like just do not understand the actual situation, and they think that this is Stefan Diggs and that they can you know they can get him. They don't have to pay that much for him. It is not that situation at all. Justin Jefferson currently is on track to be the best wide receiver in NFL history. And you're basically saying that you can get him for not peanuts, but like I would say a 2023, like a first round this year, tank down a double, second. double, but it's not animal style. Yeah. I would and say we want a, a four by four or a, two of them. The, the first, the 23rd pick in the draft this year, tank Dell and a second next year. I mean, the, essentially offering a third round pick is the equivalent yes. of just a slap the, in the face. The, <laughs> the closest thing that you could get for that is a Monroe. That would be more a Monra than than Justin Jefferson. I bet you the Lions. I, also I bet just, you Dan Campbell spits his tooth back in your face when you call him. Like I also that. just feel like we will never see an NFC North trade <laughs> with those big name players involved. I mean, TJ Hawkinson traded wrong. from the Lions to the Vikings two years ago. I just I feel like that one is slightly different though. At the time, right yeah, now you guys I are mean, both competing. Division. But uh, like I said, also also like. You would just think about what 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 the the Cowboys got for Emmett Smith or like what 
what the the Saints had, had to trade up or um who was it? Whoever drafted Ricky Williams had to trade up for Ricky Williams or Reggie Bush, whatever draft that was. If they're getting entire drafts for those players, albeit like 20 years ago, you should be getting way more for Justin Jefferson. That's all I'm saying. But uh, anyways. Uh, yeah, I also feel like um, Justin Jefferson's what? Like 24? 24, 25? Like yeah, not I mean, old. Like realistically, well, not all the time, but like I kind of feel like 27. That's like peak. No, yeah, like he's still like, I, I get it from Justin Jefferson's perspective being like, hey, like I... It'll be I, hard to replicate his numbers moving forward, but like skillfully, oh, this is an awful time for a fraud alert. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, <laughs> shit. Um, oh, bad timing. Bad We'll call it on the Texans. Right we'll call it on the Texans. Oh, God. Um, oh, no. I, it's just... Like I've seen, I've seen people be like, like it's just disrespectful. Like last year, a Packers fan was like, "Yeah, Christian Watson's uh, floor is Justin Jefferson," or it's just like I'm like, or his like ceiling is is past Justin Jefferson's, and we're just like every Vikings fan is like, "Dude, what the fuck are you talking about?" Like this, and this off season, yeah, I mean, there's there's that, a Lions fan, there's Lions fans NFL being like, thing. but like this off season, there's been a Lions fan being like. Hey, you know, Amon Ra is better than Justin Jefferson. Like Amon Ra is the better wide receiver. And they try to defend him. He's like, well, you know, Amon Ra does this better than Justin Jefferson, but you can't count the differences. Like they're different wide receivers. So then why are like hey, it was just stupid logic? This is the same thing that everybody else is doing. And even if this is a joke, like it, this is this is why people get mocked. This is why people people like don't trust anybody or you know, et cetera, et cetera. So regardless yeah yeah uh i will just say now i don't know exactly what direction the vikings are going in but what percentage rating would you give the odds of kirk cousins being the starting quarterback for the vikings next year 55 okay like a little spooky right now i'm gonna i'm gonna be honest but this is like if I could if I could redo the wish list right now, which I don't know if I'll have time to do before we get all these other teams out. It's essentially a two way street. It's if the Vikings resign Kirk Cousins, Daniel Hunter is not staying. If the Vikings resign Daniel Hunter, Kirk Cousins probably is not staying. Even though I I in my wish list was able to get both of them, it doesn't really sound like they're going to be able to keep both of them. And by the way, I saw I saw, I saw a report from I don't know one of those. Uh, just BS like NFL rumor accounts where it's like, oh, Daniel Hunter, uh, the, the the Bears are interested in signing Daniel Hunter. Like they're going to be in hot pursuit. Daniel Hunter is not going to the Bears. That is not is not happening, especially if a report that I saw about Brian Burns wanting thirty imagine? million dollars is is true. Like that's just not happening. Um, wait, wait, who got how, Brian, Brian Burns, Burns reportedly wants thirty million dollars per year. I also want thirty million. I do too. That'd be really nice. Um, but yeah, it's going to be one or the other. And I think what, what's going to happen is if they sign, I, I think it's first or second round is going to be edge rusher or quarterback either, or it's most likely it's going to be a quarterback first round. I think either way, especially if, I mean, if they trade up, it's quarterback, um, even if they sign Kirk cousins, but it's, I think it's more likely that if, um, Daniel Hunter is not, uh, is signed that it's quarterback. If, if he's not signed, there's a, 30% chance that it's going to be an edge rusher at 11 if they stay at 11. Depending, it's, it's, it's also fully dependent on whether or not they can get somebody to trade up with. And if they can't, it'll be an edge rusher. All right, translation. If Dallas Turner there, he a Viking. Uh, <laughs> translation. <laughs> if uh, yes. Jared Verse there, not a Viking. JJ that McCarthy going to Viking. someone else. All right, know. shit. I have to address this. The other day I was thinking, okay. The NFL is a league where sometimes going down the road less traveled ends up working out. And I feel like right now, the quarterback getting the most hate overall is J.J. McCarthy. Uh, do you think there's someone else that might be getting more than him right now? I feel like right now, well, Michael, as Mike, Mike's, getting, Mike's getting shit JJ's on getting for no slaughtered. reason. 
Mike's getting shit on for no reason, but well, that was just from, that was just watched from one, his film. one source. But JJ over here, okay? This is what I think about JJ, okay? Uh, I want to start off by saying this, and this is from my coach. So Jim Harbaugh recently uh, talked about how he said, don't be surprised if and when JJ is the first quarterback off the board. Now, I'm not sure if you've, if you've seen it, Everett, but for the number one quarterback off the board, as Jim Harbaugh said, it's quite interesting to me how the number one quarterback did not throw the ball one time for Michigan in the second half against Penn State and had 10 completions in the national championship game. Now, what Harbaugh has been saying about Justin Herbert, I think I, I, I agree with him a lot. He brings up how in the past he thinks Herbert has been asked to be Superman 20 to 30 plus times a game. And Harbaugh wants to instill a defense and a run offense so Herbert doesn't need to be Superman 30 times a game. Translation, Blake now with Corum, that- a charger. Well, yeah, I, th- we got a lot of things to talk about that running back room because I, I like pick 69 if Corum is there. I just, it's tough for me to see how we, how Harbaugh passes on him. That's just me. But uh, in terms of JJ, now let's say Michigan did play well to, you know, limit it and make sure JJ doesn't need to throw all the time. Uh, I, I, sure, you might be able to get me a degree, but the Michigan run game last year was not great. It was not fantastic compared to years prior. And if if JJ McCarthy truly is that good, then I am I I want to apologize right now to all Justin Herbert fantasy owners moving forward. Okay. Justin Herbert might only throw the ball six times a game moving forward. Like no. if if, if no. JJ look is I, 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 I'm 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 gonna try and not be biased. You're a little biased, uh, for different reasons, but one, you know, like this entire time period right now, everything's bullshit. Do not believe a related to the draft. Do not believe a single fucking word about and even Caleb Williams going one. Do not do not believe a single word about any. Like you can assume that though. But you can don't assume believe it, anything. But, you but don't it. believe anything. And you know, like I've heard, I've heard Drake May is gonna fall in the draft. We've heard JJ McCarthy is gonna be drafted much higher than people expect. Uh, we've heard Brock Bowers is going to go later. Like, like the, the, there's nobody knows what, unless it's Peter Schrager. Peter Schrager probably knows what the fuck's going on. But yeah, that guy knows way too much. <laughs> way too much. Way too much. But nobody knows what's going. Nobody knows what's going on, uh, except for the Water Boys and Peter Schrager. So when I say this, this is the Peter Schrager information. I, I just I don't think that there is a world in which we're going to see Drake may fall so much. And I also don't think there's going to be a world in which we're going to see JJ McCarthy jump in. Uh, I, I, I think I've seen Jaden Daniels might come up and I the combines and is, is this next week. Um, so we're going to see how those performances interact, but uh, and I'll I think mine, the, I'm going to be really, honest. Don't really change your opinion too hard. The but. only, the only surefire things I would state to you right now about the quarterbacks is JJ McCarthy will be drafted before Michael Penix and will be drafted before Bo Nix. I go, JJ McCarthy will be a top five quarterback off the board. And I mean, we'll see what happens. I think the JJ McCarthy's combine will be the first time everybody really gets to see him just throw and just purely throw and how that looks. Right. But I did see people just commenting and people were like, Hey, you know, the last time a guy shot up the board like this with the same exact comments, it was Zach Wilson. And we all know how Zach Wilson turned out. So, yeah, I, I could be wrong here, but actually, no, I think I think a lot of people were like, even before his scouting combine process, like Trey Lance still going like top fifteen at one. So I wouldn't say it's the same. Well, yeah, and then it was draft. It was literally draft day, and we were like, yeah, we heard on was- draft day they're like Trey Lance <laughs> two or whatever, Trey Lance yeah. six, and we were like, what the? You were like, what the fuck? <laughs> that was yeah, your like, literal honestly, reaction. Like, I, I think I, that I is, do. I yeah, do Zach think Wilson's the best example. I do think that I, I misread it last year, but I do think that there's a very good chance that Bo Nick or not Bo Nick, but that JJ McCarthy goes in the top 16. Like that will be something that I'm going to be firm on. I'll change it based on how the comma goes, but I, I don't really see him going later than that just based off of the way that the, the inter NFL movements are going. Yeah. I mean, if I'll be honest, like I, I, I mean, trust me, I hate JJ McCarthy, 
I, I will say though, like even going back to when it, there was a quarterback battle between him and little Cade, I was even saying then JJ gives Michigan a better chance to win because of what he can pull out of his ass. Now, I, uh, I still think right JJ's now. road to success is not starting year one. He should not be in there. Um, if he is, then I mean that's not great for his career. But uh, you do you. Um, people are just impatient. But I, 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 I think that if you're gonna take him the first round, you better well have an idea of how to develop him because he is not ready to start right now. Yeah, no, I, I like another thing. If you just compare the number of dropbacks JJ McCarthy has had to all the other available quarterbacks, like he's not even close. Like he has not played this like even comparable amount of playing time as the other quarterbacks. So that is just another thing too. Maybe to a degree, AB having less snaps could help him because you can just go. The last ball, guy who was like know. that was Mitchell Trubisky. All I'm saying. So, uh, not well, great. Track AR fifteen. Oh, it was AR fifteen. AR fifteen, maybe, but different. Eighteen pass attempts, but that is yeah, different. He's a freak. That is different. That is uh, different. Okay, you have some Trey else Lance too. Trey Lance only had one year as a starter. How'd that work out? You have something else for the NFL before I do this wish list? Uh, yeah. Uh, Tyree Kill and Justin Fields. Uh, Justin Fields unfollowed the Bears on Instagram. Uh, this will be quick. When asked about it on Amon Ra's podcast, he said, quote, and I think you'll love this. Just because you don't follow the girl on IG don't mean you're not messing with her. And Justin, you got a damn good point there. A, a damn good point. Just because you don't follow them on IG doesn't mean you're still not chasing them. So Justin, he's got a, we all know that like, this is how social media works now. Justin has just formally publicly announced uh, or requested to trade, but that's the translation uh, PR wise. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't blame him um, for his career. I hope uh, well, there's a couple of places. I hope he doesn't end up. Uh, I, I would love to see him in, in Minnesota, uh, but I know that's not going to happen. So that'd be a great fix for the Vikings for at least a year. Um, Dude, straight up, if you had Justin, that'd be so lit. You want to talk about revenge factors? Oh my God, put him in division. Bring him to me. Um, I mean, good luck, Chicago. Soldier Field will be a stomping. Also, one thing just to note, like I've been, I've been thinking about this with Caleb Williams. I, like I've seen him in person. I've been 10 feet from him and I've seen what he does. And I think he's disgusting. Like just watching what he does and what he's, what he did in that game to us. Um, and I think that he like is gross, but the one thing I, I keep thinking about is, and I mean, you brought this up in season um, those games like Notre Dame, when he got flustered and like, like when he got, when he, he started throwing the interception and he got flustered, the game went, his game went off the rails. And I, I, Chicago is not the place to have that situation because that's going to happen a lot. They don't develop well. You know, like there's a lot of problems with that team still, even though if they... I have this stat, remember correctly, they are the only team in NFL history to not have a 4,000 yard passer in a single season. Yes. And I, I, for, for Caleb's sake, I don't want to see him fuck the Vikings, but for his own career sake, I want to see him have a good career because I enjoy watching him. Uh, just as a player, I hope they figure that out. But like, boy, like that is not a good place to be if if you cannot play when you are flustered. And I think for me, that would be my big knock on him is he like he 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 can't he gets in his head and he can't get out of it. Now I know it's there's it, it it won't happen. I know it won't. But dude, Caleb Williams on the Dolphins would be so lit. <laughs> Maybe in like four years when the Bears That'd inevitably so ruin his sick. career. And the Bears inevitably ruin his career. Yeah, it, it could happen. It might happen. Um, like, I mean, put him on like just, the rank. Can you give him to Bay, please? Like, shit. Even give Caleb, Mike Evans, and Godwin on the Bucks, and he'd he'd be nice. Like, just give him guy. Give him. Something. That's you remember. I originally projected the Bucks to be the worst team in the NFL, and I was like, that's why I was like, I this gotta work because if you put Caleb Williams on the Bucks, oh my god. I think, I think um, it's beautiful. Unfortunately, but. Yeah, I, I mean, take everything with a grain of salt. It's not Stefan Diggs, uh, but, you know, it, it is it is um, observable with everything going on. Yeah, I mean, straight up, I love a, like, 
that it won't happen but like caleb on the vikes justin on the vikes oh i would just love to see a a younger guy in that quarterback for the viking I i'm just love hoping to i'm really hoping it's drake man i'm really hoping it's drake man that'd be fun dude i love drake man i'm a big drake man fan, and he runs Trust me, he runs. He's big. I, I really, really big. want Drake May. And we're in a, it sounds like we're in a trade competition with the Falcons right now and maybe the Broncos or Raiders. I think it's a like, 14. Yeah. Drake May's listed 6'5, 230. <sighs> Please. Please. Younger brother of Luke May, who hit that three for North Carolina to advance in March Madness. So big. Oh, North was that, was that legacy? His, that was his uh, Okay. All right. Uh, real quick to wrap up the episode, Ravens offseason wish list. Um, yeah, you're gonna have a name in here. I know you're not gonna like, but here we go. Equinemius St. Brown, wide receiver of the Baltimore Ravens. Huh? No, I can't do it again. <laughs> yeah, that was a one time thing. Resign Kevin Zeitler, Ronald Darby, Arthur Millett, Justin Matabike, and Daryl Worley. Restructure Lamar Jackson, Marlon Humphrey. Marcus Williams and Ronnie Stanley sign Josh Jacobs, Demarcus Robinson, Clavon Chason, and Jalen Guyton. Tender are Darius Washington and Jeremiah Moon and cut Tyus Bowser. Yeah, I mean, dude, Jalen Guyton, my God. I mean, other than the fact he doesn't have ACLs, Jesus, man, I, like he has one highlight ever. Camp body. Of Herbert Camp body. Hitting- can't body yeah, no, literally, no, literally. He's, he's a p squatter uh i mean yeah i mean you know we're not we're not here to shit on anyone but i guess the trend of bad ravens wide receivers will keep on going well hey they they did let's fit. call it's not, willie sneed guys let, you not, know let's get let's get the gang back together willie sneed wasn't actually that bad um you get what i'm saying their wide receiver room is actually much better right now and i'm assuming oh, I know, I know, I know. that they'll fix it in the draft as well but with that, thank you guys so much for watching this and raise five stars. You can find us on Spotify, TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, and on Instagram at Waterway Pod. We post new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday on YouTube and all podcast platforms. So make sure to subscribe to us there, turn on notifications so you do not miss a single episode. We post new TikToks every Tuesday to Sunday. Uh, those can some of those go up on Reels, some of those also go up over on Instagram. So make sure to turn into that. Some of our off-season wish lists will be exclusive to those platforms. So make sure you go and follow us there and subscribe. Uh, and yeah, we'll be having uh, some graphics for the awards from last episode if you guys haven't checked that out make sure to check that out but those graphics will be going up on instagram uh once we get them all done uh some of those will also be for awards that were not uh did not make the cut for the episode um but with that thank you guys so much for watching see you guys next week water boys out